we're here for Legend. Um, tell us a bit about the casting process of getting Tom Hardy in this in the title role. Well, I started um, I started out because Reggie's really the focus. So I started out wanting to cast Reggie, and uh, I asked Tom to read the script. I didn't know him, but um, I had seen him in the film Warrior, and I thought there was a quality to that character that was similar to Reggie. And I had dinner with him. He read the script, and I had dinner with him. And uh, during the dinner, all he talked about was Ron, and uh, even had his Ron voice starting already and was making jokes about passing the salad and doing it as Ron. And, and it was very entertaining, but I, thought, I immediately thought to myself, well, he definitely wants to play Ron. And I want him for Reggie, and how am I going to kind of get him back over here on Reg? And uh, kind of halfway through the dinner, I started to think maybe he could play both of them, so which is always scary because you don't want it to turn into a gimmick. And at the end of the dinner, he said, I'll do it, but i got to play both of them. i, I got to be Ron, too. And um, it weirdly, being able to play Ron and, and be really out there as a character actor I think made it okay for him to play Reggie as more of a straight, strong, silent movie star. Before, when you had him in mind for Reggie, did you have anyone in mind for Ron? No, no. I thought I, because Reggie was the lead, so I thought, get, get Reggie and we'll go from there. Because, first of all, whoever Ron's going to be has to look like Reggie. So I can't really think of them as, you know, separate guys because they, they got to be brothers, so... So the logistics of having an actor playing these two characters um, must have meant that you were doing a more special effects heavy movie than you in initially intended. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about the film is it's, it's there are a lot of effect shots in it, but you don't it's, you don't want anyone to know there's an effect shot in the film. Um, but you know, once we got it down and we did our homework and practiced and all that kind of stuff, it wasn't it was just another element of it and a, a discipline of it really that. I think helped that Tom embraced and and it was a different way of acting for him and interacting because he had to interact with someone who wasn't there and that discipline kind of informed his performance and and how we shot it and all those things so it it, it really um, helped make the film. It was rumored at one point on the um, Robin Hood movie that you were making that the lead role would again be played by the same actor, the two lead roles. Um, was that ever a possibility? Yeah, um, no, I think that was just a rumor. Right. That, that, yeah, that was, a, that was, they were, um, yeah. No, Do that you think was, that could have worked at all? Or was mm, it? I don't know. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, moving on to the, the craze then. Um, do you believe that you've given a, a, a realistic uh, portrayal of them, or was it um, something slightly more romanticized? Well, I think the, the craze are interesting because a lot of the stories, it's, it's a very, their stories written about them are very tabloid heavy. You know, it, they sell newspapers and they, they sell headlines, and you have to be kind of out there with their behavior to do that. So I think that's misrepresent. They certainly did all kinds of things, but that's to think that that's all they were is misrepresentative. Um, they were very popular club owners and sought after by celebrities and um, David Bailey's taking their photos. So this, there has to be something appealing about them or they wouldn't be in that position. I mean, there were other gangs in London at the time, the Richardsons, but David Bailey's not taking the Richardsons photo and they're not hosting celebrities at nightclubs. So I don't think I invented anything about them as far as the glamour, the gangster glamour that they, that world that they lived in. Did you get a chance to speak to many of those people who had met the Yeah, I, I did. I, um, I spoke to David Bailey, um, Barbara Windsor, the actress, um, Freddie Foreman, who was associated with them, Chris Lombriano, who was in their firm um, and went to prison with them, um, Maureen Flanagan, who was uh, Viol their mom, Violet Cray's hairdresser, she was in the house twice a week doing her hair and watching everything going on. Um, so a lot of people like that. Um, and then just people who knew them uh, less kind of prominently as well. Mm -hmm. the, the, the funny thing was is all of them, they'd preface it by saying, I know they did bad things, but boy, were they fun to be around, or boy, did I really like them, or boy, wasn't Reggie a great guy. So it's, it's very, they're almost embarrassed to say, that they are still really fond of them. 
the people that knew him. And, you know, but there's a reality to it, darker reality to it as, as far as what they did and all those things. And I, the film doesn't forgive that. Um, and they, they, I think we show all sides of it. So mm -hmm. Now we, we get um, a, a lot of the story f uh, told from Emily Browning's point of view as well. Um, what was the decision behind that and making that one of the focal points? Well, I think it, it was, I wanted to see them, I think the, the, the first way to play that movie would have been to just, we're riding along with the gangsters, we're in the back seat looking over their shoulder, watching them do what they do. And that's a, I felt that was kind of limiting um, as far as, I don't want to apologize for them, but I want to humanize them. And so I thought you want to see it from a third person's point of view who's with them, but not them um, to, to some extent. And that, I was always fascinated when I was doing research about Frances and what, who she was exactly and what, what part of it she played. And I thought it was a great point of view for the film and a point of view that put you into the story in the middle of it, in the thick of things, because you're invested in, in her and him emotionally, as opposed to, like I said, just being in the back seat on a ride along. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, as a Londoner myself, I thought you gave a very accurate portrayal of London now in, in some way. Was that the intention in terms of relating it to modern London? Yeah, I think what I, what I don't like in, a, in period films is when the period becomes um, very other. Like this, what, what's happening here could never happen anywhere else um, because I don't think people change. I don't, I think people stay the same. The times change and technology changes. But the, you have to recognize your own world in that world or, or it just becomes a curiosity piece, I think. So the more you could, you, you need to keep it period as far as the look and the vibe of it. But, but the more relatable it was on a human level, I, I think it be, the story rings truer that way. We always hear about um, some foreign audiences struggling with uh, strong English accents. Do you think that would be a case with this? Because it is a very authentic, thick accent that yeah, Tom Hardy has. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, early on, we we're going to go for the for the way it's supposed to sound and the way they sounded. And I think I think most audiences, if they're engaged in a story, they'll go along and they'll do their work that they got to do watching it. And if they're not engaged, then things like accents and, and peculiar idioms become annoying. But when they're engaged, you, you, you gravitate to those things and you want to listen harder and try to figure out what's going on and kind of get the things that they're saying that you might not have a firsthand knowledge of. And, and that seems how it, we, we, we did a marketing test in the States um, and that's, that's how it, they, they very much enjoyed the film even if they weren't aware of the craze particularly, but wanted to, wanted to get involved and figure it out. But for sure, they, a couple of things they, they, don't, they don't get, and, uh, but that's just so. Yeah, I mean, you is. didn't use any rhyming Cockney slang in this, I, I noticed. So. No, we, didn't, we did one Raspberry Ripple, I think, was the, <laughs> the, was the one we, we used, yeah. Excellent. Okay, and finally, um, Tom Hardy now is firmly established as an A-lister. Um, what stage of the process was he at um, when you actually made the film? Like, uh, obviously, before Mad Max came out. So, was he in your mind already an A-list star at that point? You know, I just, I just, I don't kind of get caught up in. I, I always think you, you, it's a bad road to go down predicting who's a star and and who's on the A-list and who isn't because you end up with the person that's wrong for the part. Um, and all I, I knew, I obviously know Tom's reputation coming in and that people have that expectation of him. Um, but I just thought this is the guy who can really pull this off. And, um, I, you know, I was, I was happy to know that he was coming out in Mad Max because that's only good for his profile, which is good for the movie and all those things. But he certainly deserves to, to be considered on that list. Um, and I think the very the fun thing about this movie is he, he, I don't think he's ever shown himself as a strong, silent, very well-groomed movie star because it's not interesting to him. But that's what Reggie is. And we, so we get that part of Tom that he's, I don't think he's ever put out there really because he gets to play Ron. 
so he's he's it's okay to play Reggie in a way. So that, I think that's that's exciting. Is as 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 outrageous as Ron is, it's it's. I think it's Tom as Reggie that you haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a few bits where he looks a lot like Bond, which I thought yeah. was quite... Oh, yeah. No, we used, to, we used to sit at dailies, and a shot would come on, and someone in the back would just go, da 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 you know? So hopefully uh, it's his uh, audition for, uh, for James Bond. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, yeah, I think he'd be great in it, and I love this film. I thought it was a brilliant way of doing it. Yeah, cool. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much, man. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.